What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about the levels of BIM as well as the IFC standard. Now before I get started, the levels of BIM should not be confused with the dimensions of BIM. These are two separate entities. If you're interested in dimensions of BIM and what is uh, 3D BIM, 4D, 5D, 6D uh, BIM, uh, check out uh, my, the link in the description. I've already done a video on that. That is uh, most referring to the software and on the depth of uh, like the uh, how much are you utilizing BIM I guess that's what I, I would call the dimensions of BIM and levels of BIM is uh, more of a, a legality thing it's something that the the British government I guess is trying to in enforce and it's uh, it's basically uh, agreeing upon uh, on what level of collaboration uh, uh, companies are going to use to uh, to on, to to work on a project and uh, just some sort of a structure as far as the the collaboration between all of the engineers that are working in the building industry. So let's get started with levels uh, of BIM. And here I've got the NBS, uh, like the official website, and they've outlined uh, some sort of a definition of uh, what levels of BIM are. And of course, keep in mind that this is still in an early stages of uh, like establishing these levels of BIM. And uh, there, there might be some changes. There might be uh, little changes. It's this isn't really strict at this point, uh, but it is the future, and I think we should really talk about it because it is going to. Uh, to, to become important in the future and uh, sooner uh, companies and uh, basically countries start utilizing this and start enforcing these uh, standards uh, the building industry is going to get a lot more efficient this and uh, for us architects it's going to be a lot more organized and the life will be uh, that a little bit easier so let's start with uh, level zero BIM and it goes from level zero to level three. Keep that in mind. So let's start with level zero, which is something something that most companies have. <laughs> and uh, it's well, actually, if you're a company and you're operating at uh, this level zero, if this, this defines your like your work. You're you're in trouble. So it's the simplest form. Level zero uh, efficiently means effectively means uh, the no collaboration. 2D CAD drafting is only utilized mainly for production information and output and distribution is via paper or electronic prints uh, or a mixture of both. The majority of the industry is already well ahead of this now. So basically this is a very poorly managed uh, company that's still like operating in the 90s and they're only using AutoCAD and they're printing everything and they're, they're, they're using hand sketches and it's just not a way uh, that, that any company should work. So let's move Move on to a level one BIM. Now this is them, this typically uh, comprises of a mixture of 3D CAD for concept work and 2D for drafting and stationary approval of documentation and production information. CAD standards are managed through uh, BS uh, 1192 2007. And electronic sharing of data is carried out from a common data environment, CDE, uh, often managed by the construct constructor. Uh, to achieve level 1 BIM, uh, the Scottish Features Trust states uh, you should achieve the following. Uh, roles and responsibilities should be agreed upon. Naming conventions should be adopted. Arrangements should be put in place to create and maintain a project-specific codes and project spatial coordination. A communication data environment, CDE, for example, a project uh, extrant or uh, electronic document manager system, EDMS, should be adopted to allow information to be shared between all members of project teams. Uh, a suitable information hierarchy should be agreed, uh, which supports the concept of the CDE and the document uh, and the document repository. 
So what does this mean? This is basically your pretty much your basic firm. So for the conceptual part of the design, you're using some sort of 3D CAD. So you're either using SketchUp or 3ds Max or maybe even Revit just for like the conceptual part. And then for the drafting, you're using 2D CAD. So you're using 2D floor plans. And again, this isn't really efficient, but uh, you agreed upon some uh, naming conventions, which is like of course you should agree on naming conventions and you have some some place where you leave all data and it, it's all properly named and it's it's just a, a, a bit more organized but you're still using a 2d technology you're, you're not really moving into into BIM territory so this is like you were still very very old school uh, now let's move to level 2 BIM. Level 2 BIM is, dis is distinguished by collaborative working and uh, requires an information exchange process which is specific to the project and coordinated between various systems and project uh, participants. Any CAD software that uh, each party uses must be capable of exporting one common file format such as IFC. IFC is very important and uh, industry foundation class and I'm going to be talking about this a bit uh, later in the video or uh, COBIE, uh, Construction Operation Building Information Exchange. Uh, this is the method of working that has been set as a minimum target for uh, by the UK government for all work on public se sector work. Now this is really important because uh, this means that uh, if you're working in the public sector, you're actually working for the, the government in the UK, you can't work without using a level two BIM and level two BIM is effectively uh, using a software like Revit or uh, Archicad. And for more information, okay, we don't need that. So basically this is the important part. Uh, moving to, to the, uh, level 2 BIM, you're actually using some sort of a, either Revit software or Archicad or some software that's bringing everything together and uh, that can uh, export the IFC standard, which uh, again, I'm going to be talking about a bit uh, later on. Let's just go through level 3 and then we can move on. So. Level 2 BIM, that's a company that's working on a bit higher level, they're living in the present and they're using the technologies uh, that, uh, that the present time has to offer. Now let's go to level 3 BIM. Level, level 3 has not been yet fully defined, so as I mentioned, uh, this is all in beginning stages, so don't consider any of these things like to be concrete. It not, has not been fully defined, however, the uh, vision for this is outlined in the UK government's level 3 st strategic plan. Uh, within this plan, they set uh, the following key measures uh, to be secured uh, with further funding. So, the creation of a set of new international open data standards, uh, which would pave the way for easy sharing of data access uh, the, to the entire market. The establishment of a new contract framework for projects which have been uh, produced with uh, BIM to ensure consistency, avoid confusion and encourage open collaborative work. Uh, the creation of cultural environment uh, which is cooperative, seeks to learn, uh, seek, seeks to learn and share. Training the public sector client uh, to use the BIM technology such as data requirements, operational methods and constructual, uh, con contractual processes and driving domestic and international growth and jobs in technology and construction. So level 3 BIM is basically uh, like looking uh, in, into the future and the idea is to have this uh, open data standards which means that we can all share data, that uh, we can all share knowledge, that everything can, can kind of work together and basically let's tie this into the IFC standard uh, which is something that I also uh, would like to explain which is very important for people that are in the building industry. IFC standard uh, is basically the USB of BIM. So before USB computers had 
like a bunch of different ports that would usually change from generation to generation it, it was really annoying there was not a universal uh, like connection and now we have USB and USB works with everything so you can connect your like computer mouse you can connect your keyboard your um, your microphone that I have over here like your headphones everything can go through USB you can transfer data through USB so it's like a universal method a universal connector for computers IFC is basically the same thing as far as file formats go with BIM. So it's usually very annoying because when you're working in Revit and uh, you have maybe somebody's working with Revit 2016, you're working with the 2019 version and it's impossible to collaborate because when you save something they can't open that file up. So there is a lot of these problems and not to mention if somebody's working in Archicad and then that's a complete new nightmare because you can't collaborate at all. IFC basically means that you can export your Revit file as IFC format and uh, Archicad can also export IFC and then both Revit and Archicad can uh, read IFC. So that's like one universal uh, format, a file format that uh, that can support like everything that Beams, BIM uh, needs to su needs supported. And, uh, Again, this is in beginning stages, or maybe not beginning stages, but it's not really at like the fully operational level. Uh, this summer, I was I was in Germany. I was visiting that BIM girl, and we went to Autodesk, and she actually has a video about it. So check it out if you if you're interested in seeing that. But they talked about uh, uh, later on after that video was filmed. They talked a bit about the IFC standard and how hard it is to to comply uh, with it, and how hard it is to kind of adjust everything uh, with Revit so it can work with the, this IFC standard. It's, it's very complicated, uh, it doesn't work perfectly uh, for now, uh, but it is something to look forward to. So uh, learn these levels of BIM, try to be at at least level 2 or higher and um, always be, always keep learning about the new things in our BIM world. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this uh, video. I hope you have learned something new. Please uh, like sh and share this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I make daily videos. And uh, if you have any qu uh, comments uh, about this and maybe you would like to add something, maybe you don't agree with something, and maybe you have just your opinion, uh, leave it in the comment section below. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And I'm coming with another Revit tutorial tomorrow.